Welcome back everyone, my name is Brian. We're gonna continue our journey into Python 3. We've been saying for 30 some odd videos now that we're gonna talk about classes, and well, today is the day. We're gonna start talking about classes. Before we dive too deep, we've got some fundamental concepts we need to cover. First and foremost, you've heard of OOP, or Object Oriented Programming. This is the cornerstone to that. Basically, a class is a blueprint for creating objects. You'll hear people say classes and objects interchangeably, and they're two different things. A class is a blueprint or a plan on how an object should be created. The object is when Python or another language actually creates the object or the instance of that class from the blueprint that we're going to make. Classes are also a big, big topic way bigger than we can cover in the single video. So we're going to split this up into multiple videos. Let's dive in and take a look. All right, classes can get very, very complex. We're going to create a simple class. So I'm going to just paste a comment, create a class. We're going to do this in a separate file, but you can do it in all in one file as you're going to see in future videos. But I just want to show you kind of the real world approach to how people do this. So I'm gonna make a new file. We're gonna call this file cat.py because we're gonna make our own cat class here. I'm gonna paste in some notes. The cat class. Self is the first parameter. I wanna put that right there because people often forget this. If you're from another language, it is equal to the this in another language. And what are we talking about here? This is why people get class and object confused. The class is a blueprint or how the object will be created. Once the object is created, it becomes an instance. So I'm gonna put that. If we're in an instance, cause you can have multiple instances, as you're gonna see in this video, we'll make multiple cats and you wanna refer to the current instance you need to this or in Python self. So people often think that self and class are the same thing and they're not, they're two different things. Whenever you hear class, it's the blueprint. So let's make the blueprint. Okay. That's it. It's really that simple. Now we're going to have to add some attributes here. So I'm going to say name equals just blank. And let's go ahead and say age equals. And everybody kind of has their own way of doing this. This is simply how I do it. Um, feel free to adopt your own style or your own company standard, whatever you're working with here. But this is how I do it. I want to know the variables. And whenever you see a class and you see this indentation, think scope. So these exist inside of the cat scope. And each instance of these will have independent variables. They're not shared, although you can share them. We'll talk about that in another video. I know you're probably sick of hearing me say, we'll talk about that in another video, but there's a lot to coding. So can't cover it all in one. So now we're going to say def and knit. Now remember the double underscore means it's something baked into Python. This is the constructor. And what I mean by constructor is this is called when we make an instance of this class. So we can execute code. Think of this like the main function for a class here. As soon as Python creates an instance of cat, we will run this function automatically. You can feel free to omit this. And that's called the default constructor where you just simply don't have one or you can actually define it yourself. Now remember I said self is the first param. So we need to say self. That is the first parameter we need to have is a reference to the current object. Now I'm gonna just paste in some notes here. Basically just stating the obvious self is required. The other parameters are optional. And let's go ahead and fill this out. Because we want to reference the current object, we're going to say self dot name equals the name parameter. And then from here, it just simply becomes a lesson in copy and paste because we want to do the rest of these. So we're just simply initializing these variables. Just going to copy and paste these out. Maybe. There we go. So we're saying the self name. This guy is equal to the parameter, or actually the argument name, age, age, color, color, becomes pretty self-explanatory. Now I'm going to print out something just so we know it was constructed.
And I'm just going to say the constructor for self name. And from here, it's actually fairly simple. We can just define any real code or functions that we want. For example, we can say def meow. And if you do this, you're going to get really confused when nothing works. Remember, you have to have self as the first parameter there. Otherwise, you're just simply going to have a bad time. Nothing's going to work right. Indentation may drive you crazy. Remember, you just want to line up with your current scope. So class scope, function scope, so on and so on. And then I'm just going to say print f. Let's go ahead and say self.name and meow. And I'm going to speed this up just a little bit because we've covered functions before. But the main takeaway here is you have a blueprint and you can define what this object, once it's created, is done. Now notice how I've just intermixed those. We're defining a blueprint, but we're also defining the behavior of the object once it's created. This is why people get things so horribly confused. Go ahead and make a sleep function. And let's just go a little crazy here. Let's go ahead and say, hungry and get rid of this. For x in range, I don't want to do anything too drastic, just five. I'm going to say self dot meow. So when we say self, remember we're taking the current instance of this blueprint, whatever's running in memory, and we're going to call this function. So if you have two cats, we're taking one of them and say, make that cat now meow. And we're going to call this function over here. So it becomes very simple how you can work in your own class. Now from here, I'm just going to say, go ahead and add a couple more just to show that you can do some stuff here. And I want to add just one more. We're going to say description and here I want to print some stuff out so we're going to print out the color out because I want to know what color this cat is is a say is a proper English here so we're saying the name is a color cat comma who is years old. Pretty simple little function, but basically what we're trying to demonstrate here is you can do pretty much anything you want. You can have functions call other functions, you can do hardcore math, you can actually create instances of other classes, do pretty much anything you want. But now we have fully defined a blueprint for a cat. And this cat will have a constructor where we're setting the variables and it will meow, sleep, be hungry, and meow a lot of times because that's what cats do, and we can make it eat, and we can get a description of that cat. So far, our class doesn't do anything. It's because we haven't created an instance of this yet. Remember, the class is just a blueprint. Now we've got to actually create an object that we can work with or an instance. So let's flip back to our file here. First thing we need to do is import it so we can actually work with it. Now we have to import this because it's in another file. If it was in the same file, we wouldn't have to import. But let's go ahead and go import cat. And now we can just work with that directly. Or if we really wanted to, we could say something like this from cat import, and then we could import the cat class. So now what we can say is from the cat file, import this block of code. And when we go in here, it is the cat class. So if you had multiple classes in here, it would only import cat, whereas import cat would import everything in that file. So that's why you're going to see those two out in the wild there. Now the important part, let's go ahead and use the class. Now when I say use a class, what we're really doing is we're going to create instances of that class. I'm going to make a function called test. Now you may be wondering, why don't we have a self here? You've been saying self over and over again, because we're not in a class. We don't have a current object. So there's no current object or no current instance. We're running right on the global scope. We simply don't need it. And if we try to use it, really all we're doing is creating a parameter. 
that we'll have to give some object to that doesn't exist, so it would make no sense. So if that sounded confusing, it's because it makes no sense to put self there. So we're gonna say b equals cat. Now you notice from other languages, you would have to put like new. You don't have to do that with Python. It does it automatically. You do need the brackets though. Now we need to give it a name, an age, and give it a color. If you're wondering how I got those, it's because we define this in our file. In our constructor, it needs a name, age and color. Notice we did not call self because Python does this automatically. What it's happening under the hood is it's saying make an instance of the cat class and then invisibly it's putting self right there or x that instance of that class. We don't have to do it. Python does it for us. That's one of the hidden little gotchas. You may look at this and go where is self coming from? Python does it for you. All right so we've got this cat. Let's make another cat here. And let's call this Othello. This was one of my cats. He was a really great cat. I miss him so much. And he was a black cat. A lot of people don't like black cats. They think they're bad luck. But this is like the best cat I've ever, ever had in my life. So we got two instances, B and C. And they are two different things. Let's go ahead and print out description for B and the description for C. And we can take this out just a little bit further if we wanted to. We could say C meow. And if you're wondering, yes, you could give it a more complex variable name. You could actually call it Kit Cat or Othello or whatever you wanted. Let's go ahead and call B sleep. C is going to be hungry because the cat was always hungry. And then we're going to say, you know what? B's not hungry. B's going to eat. And if name equals, and we've done this before in another tutorial, but just in case, we're checking to see if Python is running this directly. And if it is, we want to run some code. Now, I've said this is the main function. We don't actually have to have a function called main. What we can do is, well, anything we want. And this is kind of the beautiful thing about Python. I'm going to say x at, and we're going to give it a name of test. Notice how age and color already have a default value, and so we don't have to have them, but we do have to have a name. We covered all that in our functions video. I'm just going to go ahead and print out x. I'm not going to call this test function just yet. I want to show you something. Uh-oh. Name error. White is not defined. What did we screw up here? Let's go in here. We are on cat.py line 7. Oh, interesting. Name white is not defined. Name white is not defined. What do you think is going on here? So we have line 12, dot, 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 color white. That's, what's what we're, that's what we're missing here. I was handing it some type of object that didn't exist. So if you ever run into that is not defined, Kind of a little bit of explanation on the fly. That's why we simply, instead of a string, we were trying to hand it an object. Simple enough fix, but for a moment just kind of threw me for the loop. All right, now let's clear this out and run this again. There we go. So you're going to see this and you're going to think you have an error. But really what's going on here is it's telling us underscore cat name of the file dot cat. So we can actually go in here, go in here, and we can see exactly what it's doing. And then object. So now we have an object. We're working with object-oriented programming or an instance of that object. And it is located at this. Now this looks really confusing, at this. This is actually a memory location. So if you're coming from a language like C or C++, something that actually where you play around with the memory directly, this is the memory location. That is really cool. So now we can know what's going on here. Let's flip back here and let's actually just print out B and print B. There we go. Let's clear this and let's call our test function as well. And let's see this whole thing in action. So now we know our horrible goof up in our code here is fixed. We know that class works 
and we can start making more instances of it. So pop quiz, how many instances of this class are we creating? So three, you're correct. One, two, and three. Let's go ahead and run this, see it in action. All right, so scroll all the way up. Actually, I'm just gonna bring this whole thing up here. So we have cat cat object at this location. And then you see the constructors firing off for Kit Kat and Othello. So the constructor is called, even though we don't call it, it's called automatically. Think of that like the main function for a class. And if you're confused about what that is, quick recap, it's this def underscore init. That is our constructor. Flipping back to the output here. You can see now we have a cat object at this location and a cat object at that location. And you don't have to memorize these numbers, but if you just kind of look at the last few characters here, you can see they're in different locations. That's how you know they're different objects because Python has created three different objects at three different memory locations. And we can treat them independently. Kit Cat is a tabby cat who's one years old. Othello is a black cat who is six years old. This is the cornerstone of object oriented programming. And then we can work with those objects directly and do pretty much anything we want. So major takeaways from this video, we are covering object-oriented programming and we're talking about classes, which are the blueprints for objects. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers, and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you smash that like and subscribe button. The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.